hello. Welcome to Eddie, Mary, Nolene, Bedroom Computer and Samsung Tablet 3265. Don't worry, you haven't missed much. Brownie's finished the pep talk, but I haven't started. Right, so, ask me anything. I, actually, um, before I go to questions, I just want to add a few words to what Brianie said. Like everyone else, I thought we were finished for when we lost Vincent, but it's amazing how we all rallied together. Vincent Arthur was right about one thing. If we let them get away with it, it'll be the tip of the iceberg. It'll be the, the green light for government and big business to destroy any community at once. They thought they'd beaten us, but this is our chance to fight back. But I can't deny my part in what happened. I'm, I'm not here to make excuses for what I did or didn't do. But I know you've got lots of questions for me, so who wants to go first? Honestly, nothing's off limits. Oh, I see, force it. Lots of questions. <laughs> and they all say the same thing. How are you? Are you okay now? I'm fine. Yeah. I I'm fine. Um, I wasn't, but... All of us owe a lot to Bryony for holding this campaign together, but she really took care of me too. She found me somewhere to live. Fixed me up with a therapist. Found me a job. When I was well enough, but... I'm back to normal now, or as normal as it gets. Thanks for asking. I appreciate it. Right, any more questions? Anyone? Oh, here's one. Ruth B, which Tory MP do you want to see a thong selfie from next? None. One was quite enough. Next question. James, when did you start believing Sophie? Oh God, um, that's a difficult one. James says, sorry, that was too personal, forget I asked. No, don't apologize. This is ask me anything. I'm ashamed to say I started believing Sophie the same day as everyone else. I knew her better than everyone. Um, sorry, this is harder than I thought. <laughs> Can someone ask something a bit more lighthearted? Blakesy, in a fight between Darth Vader and Voldemort, who would win? Thank you, Blakesy. Lighthearted, but off topic. Nolene, why was someone like you working for Carter Austin? This might sound strange, but it, it used to just be a job. I was working in the marketing department and becoming an activist was the last thing on my mind. Then one day the director of communications told me they were creating a post and said I should apply. I was embarrassed about how much David's parents were paying towards our mortgage so I applied and I got it. Officially it was because I was good at social media but I was later told off the record it was because of where I grew up on the Ellensfield estate where Carter Austin were about to announce a major government contract to regenerate. That seemed fine to me, I mean, I'd never been back since I moved away, but I said I'd be happy to give a local perspective. The place was run down, but there was a nice sense of community. There was a park and school and leisure centre that could all do with some renewal. And the directors told me, yes, there's plans for all of those. Ha, fucking ha. When it was announced there was a, a massive party, it would mean promotion, bonuses all around, but almost straight away some YouTuber called Vincent Arthur started posting videos about it. I'd heard of him, he used to be in a few films with fart jokes and now he was in fringe politics. Just ignore him, everyone said. He'll move on when he's not getting enough clicks. But he was let, getting clicks and he wasn't letting it go. So then management tried to discredit him. Called him a hypocrite for owning five luxury flats. When that didn't work, Carter Austin created a YouTube series called Activist Chat, which always seemed to be with young, attractive females. 
When that didn't work either, I tried to put my foot down. I said, we've got to rebut what he's actually saying. Because by this point, he was claiming there was secret plans to replace the school and park and leisure centre with executive apartments. <laughs> of course, as we all know, the real plans were exactly as Vincent described. But here's the thing. No one in the office was asking questions. We were affecting the, the lives of real people and all the talk was about attracting investment. Anything that didn't go right was the fault of people not being positive enough. Do you remember that god-awful campaign of theirs? I'm backing better. I couldn't bring myself to wear one of those badges. I, I think that was the beginning of the end. But thank God I got out. It was like a cult by then. Right. Question from Graham D. What was the final straw? That's easy. Kingsley Parkinson. Kingsley fucking Parkinson MP, the, the self-appointed champion of inner city regeneration. Carter Austin rolled out the red carpet for him. I mean, I could put up with the corporate toadying, but he was practically stating that poor people brought poverty on themselves and people I worked with, people I respected, parroted his views as their own. In the meantime, I'd seen one of Vincent's rallies for myself. My boss had wanted me to see what sorts of people were going to them and it was people from all walks of life. But you know the thing they had in common, the thing I could see on all of their faces, was hope. I think for the first time I thought, why am I doing this? What am I doing with my life? But it was, it was Kingsley's conduct in the office that did it for me though. Kept on asking for one-to-one -one meetings under the pretense of team building with young, attractive, female employees. <laughs> I started hearing in-jokes about excuses to get out of the meetings. And I thought, I'm a deputy director. I have to do something. So I raised it straight with the CEO and he told me he'd look into it urgently. But weeks passed and nothing happened. <laughs> Finally, my manager told me I'd been bypassing proper procedure by talking with the women who'd been in meetings with Kingsley. I just exploded. I told her she could stick a job for us and that was that. You know, I always wondered if that was the plan. Try and make me quit instead of trying to sack me. But I had the last laugh. Well, I see loads of comments and they're all kind of saying the same thing. Oh, come on, you can't just leave it there. Well, you all know what I did next, but you want to know my secret. I was very, very patient. I was lucky enough to have no Twitter account and I deleted all my old tweets and started posting fresh. Reinvented myself as Camilla, 20, final year English lit student. Sick of the woke bullshit, aspiring journalist. I started linking stuff from The Telegraph and Spectator. Had some arguments with some lefties. I mean, I even had some cracking fights with myself. And when I thought the time was right, I interacted with Kingsley MP himself started liking some of his tweets, and then I replied praising his courage to do what was needed. He then started liking my tweets and retweeted and quote tweeted me. But I was one of dozens egging him on. But he only seemed interested in me. Was it because Camilla was hot? I, I took a chance. Hi, I know you're busy, but I was wondering if you'd give me some advice on political journalism. He replied. We went to DMs. His ego was so easy to massage. But within a week, he was on to, oh, my wife doesn't understand me. I had to be careful now. I didn't want to be seen to be leading him on. But when he made a joke about bringing back page three girls, I couldn't resist. I said, nowadays we do selfies instead. He stopped replying. Had I overplayed my hand, I thought. But no. He was getting himself ready to send his selfie. That selfie. He really thought that he looked like a Greek god, but it was gross. And thanks to all of you folks, everyone on Facebook and Twitter has seen that. By the time the mainstream press picked it up, dozens of women were posting their stories of him. 
I mean, it, it was mostly over, over friendly touching in work settings, but it was enough to end his career. And I thought, I've beaten them. I thought, this has got to be the, the tip of the whole rotten iceberg. Well, didn't work out that way, did it? Right, I'm getting lots of questions, so I'm going to get a little bit picky. How did Sophie get to be the face of Camilla? Good question. Um, I wanted to run my sting idea past someone, and I'd remembered Greg and Sophie from a previous rally. They were both Vincent super fans and supported all of his campaigns, and they thought my idea was great. And they told Vincent, and he thought it was great too. Anyways, one side issue was what to use for Camilla's avatar. I, I knew there could be a chance that I have to send some lingerie selfies, and it could be me because one, he'd recognise me, and two, no way. Anyways, this was my first mistake. I mentioned it to Sophie. She said she'd do it. Um, I don't think Greg was too happy about it, but she insisted. I said, I'd just need a face and I'd let her know if I needed anything more. Which I didn't. Of course she did the selfies anyway. How did you end up moving in with Sophie? <laughs> Oh yeah, that. Um, the other problem with the sting was that I hadn't told David what I was doing and he worked out it was me straight away. You don't need to know who said what, but he let it slip that his parents were expecting me to become a housewife. So I let it slip that I only got with him to escape my mother and ended up storming out only to realise it was night and I had nowhere to go. So I rang Sophie. <laughs> she said I could crash at hers. That place, it turned out, was one of Vincent's luxury flats. I mean, he had a point. He's getting all this flack for owning all these empty properties, so he's putting it to good use. Greg and Sophie lived in Leicester and they were forever travelling back and forth, and so this made it easy for them. Although at the time, Greg was mostly tied up with his job and it was just Sophie there. Sophie couldn't have been a better friend for a breakup. I insisted I wasn't going to get drunk and rant about my ex. And show me doing exactly that. Was Vincent ever a problem when you worked with him? Not really. Not to me. <laughs> um, Vincent offered me a job straight after Politician Perth, but it was mostly Bryony that I worked with. Vincent himself said he was just a figurehead. It was Bryony who was the brains behind the campaign. In retrospect, the only thing he might have said that was creepy was, I know this doesn't define you, but I really like your hair. <laughs> I wasn't creeped out, I was flattered. I mean, hands up, who's heard that one? <laughs> A lot of you. If there was something that did feel weird, it was that Vincent kept on turning up at the flat unannounced. Never when Greg was around, and always strange times of the day. Half the time, Sophie was ready for bed, or wearing a towel, or in the middle of changing. And this is going to sound weird, but it was, it was Sophie I was irritated with. What you have to understand is that Vincent gave me a purpose in life. When I did that speech about Carter Austin's threatening letters, saying they were running scared, I, I've never felt so alive. When we got drunk that night, me... Vincent, Bryony, Greg, Sophie. Sophie and Vincent were talking a lot. And then I was irritated with Greg just standing there like a lemon. Come on, mate, I thought, she's your girlfriend. About half nine, Greg left with Sophie to go get the last train back to Leicester. And I remember feeling relieved because Sophie hadn't tried to kiss Vincent. Anyways, about one o'clock in the morning, Sophie came back in but she wasn't usually this quiet. I looked outside and I saw Vincent saying, look, we're cool, okay? And then he noticed me and he apologized for getting me involved. And I asked Sophie if everything was fine and she said it was. Had Vincent rejected her, I thought? I, I didn't give it the, the attention I should have. It was around the time that Cotter Austin had took on a big PR firm and they were spouting bullshit faster than I could debunk it. Four hour days turned into six, then eight, then ten, then twelve. 
Was there anything different about Sophie afterwards? In hindsight, yes. I didn't notice at the time because I didn't know what had changed. She carried on clubbing and insisted I went with her, but there was like something forced about her mood. Um, I started noticing empty bottles of spirits, but Sophie had always been a big drinker, so I didn't take any of attention of that. Finally, I get a call from Bryony. Vincent has something to say to Sophie and Greg, and they thought I should sit in. So one afternoon, a contrite Vincent made a confession that after Sophie put Greg on the train that night, she phoned Vincent for a meet-up. He thought she'd only wanted to talk to him, but they were both tipsy, and they took a shortcut through a park, and they stopped under a bridge, and one thing led to another, and he was so, so, so sorry. And Greg was furious. With Sophie. And Vincent said, hey, take it out on me. And Greg was shouting at both of them while I just sat there, not knowing what to do. Greg stormed out, and that was the last I heard of him. Until he posted that blog post. You all know what happened next. I, um, I read a few of the comments. I'm glad your bird got some real cock. That was classy. One evening, I went back to the flat and Greg was on the phone arguing with Sophie. It was like he was blaming her for getting massacred online. I don't know. What I do know is that half an hour after the call finished, Sophie told me she was going to the police the next day and she wanted me to go with her. She wouldn't say why. Um, I think deep inside, I, I knew. I just told myself, keep an open mind. <laughs> but I had to hear it from her. All of it. I wasn't even supposed to be in the room, <laughs> but she insisted she couldn't speak without me. About how, yes, she had met Vincent that night and led him through a park and stopped under a bridge. And yes, maybe she thought one thing might lead to another. But then she got cold feet. And Vincent wouldn't take no for an answer and she tried to pull away and that's when she realised she couldn't because he had her wrist pinned against a wall. I don't need to tell you the rest then. We've all read the statement. And after that, I did the thing I'll never forgive myself for. I went back to work. It wasn't about Vincent, it was about the estate, I told myself. Look, um, what you have to understand is that they were throwing everything they could at Vincent and I'd seen so much of their bullshit I didn't want to believe it anymore and part of me just wanted it to be a massive misunderstanding by the time I got back to the flat she was gone she's left a note Greg had been beaten up and she had to be with him So I did what I should have done weeks ago. I talked to someone, Bryony, um, didn't know who else to trust. She talked a lot of sense. She, um, she said it was the first she'd heard of anything like this, but she agreed we had to take it seriously. However, after we talked over all our options, we concluded there was nothing we could do, not without giving away what Sophie had said in confidence. All we could do was let the police do their job and See what came of it. And that was my biggest mistake. Question from Dina. Should the police have arrested him when they did? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. They said they had to after they found another complaint on file. Then some idiot leaked his arrest to the press. I didn't read any of it. I was taking Bryony's advice to stay off the internet. I only found out later that Sophie had sent Vincent the underwear selfies and people were posting them online as if that was proof that she must have wanted it. Stu H, what was the worst abuse you read? I hope you get raped so you know what a real rape is. I didn't read that till much later, long after. Um, I was just trying to find out where Sophie was. 
She hadn't been back to Greg's at all. She'd stayed in a backpackers, but people had recognised her and no one knew where she'd gone after that. And then suddenly on the day she, she returned my call. She told me she was leaving. I um, begged her to come home, but she said she had to go. Her train was coming and the line cut out. I must have spent days only getting her voicemail. When out of the blue, Vincent comes round, but it was like, no Vincent I'd seen before. <laughs> He'd always seemed so confident, in control, but this time he was, I almost felt sorry for him, almost. He was saying it wasn't his fault, begging me to believe him. My phone wouldn't stop ringing, but he had hold of my wrist, saying, you have to believe me. I was like, I, I don't know what you're on about. And he just said, Sophie. I told him, if you don't let go of me, I'll scream. And I grabbed my phone, and everyone had been sending me the same article, Suicide on Thameslink. And I knew. I don't remember much after that, um... The police said when they arrived, I was on top of him screaming, you bastard, you fucking bastard. I don't think I would have been in the right state to go to court, <laughs> but they didn't need me in the end. Not after the other 12 women came forward. I can see lots of questions coming through, but um, we've run out of time. I want to say thank you to Bryony for organising. Uh, she really is the brains behind all of this. Um, don't worry about me. What's done is done. What's important is that we regroup and we keep fighting this social cleansing. They've got the go ahead, but the pandemic has brought us time. If we can convince the investors they're onto a loser, we win. Wait, I am. Um, I want to read this last comment. Lucy, I'm the person who wrote, I hope you get raped. So you know what a real rape is. I'm so sorry. Well, thanks. Um, listen, what we have to understand is that there are loads of people out there that aren't racist or sexist or bullies, but they are loyal to people who are. But I'm no different. I'm, I'm not. Look, I have to say this. I didn't go to the trial, but I did speak to some of the other, with, other women. And you know what they told me? They went to Bryony for support. And the next day they were sacked. She knew and she protected him. We can't be the good guys if we look the other way and I can't pretend any longer. I'm sorry, everyone. I've torpedoed our campaign again, but this is more important.